mailbag. Let's see what we have here. And maybe, just maybe, I should take the knife, but oh well. Oh. And it's <laughs> LCD displays, raw ones. And for some reason, half of them are properly packed, yeah, with some foam on the pins, and the other half isn't, which led, of course, in just a flimsy envelope to, yeah. Band pins. Uh, okay, let's see if I can uh, bend these pins back and uh, get one to work. So I ordered two different types and just by looking at them at an uh, angle I determined uh, which is one. I couldn't do that by the part number, which has nothing to do with what I ordered. Uh, but yeah, I ordered a four-digit display and uh, you see it's working. We will have a close-up in a second and I wired it up according to the uh, meager documentation available and it worked. And uh, first note, this thing has two common or backplane pins. And I measured them. They are, if they are connected, they are very high impedance between them. And uh, in fact, you only need one of them for the display to work, which is uh, very helpful if you uh, do laid out. Um, I mean, you need at least one. And I'm currently running that thing uh, with a square wave from my nice function generator, uh, unboxing and review, yeah, cards here, at five volts peak and 50 hertz. So this would be perfect for an Arduino. But uh, let me turn down the amplitude a little bit to let's say 3.3 volts. They are specified for 5 volts, okay? Oh, too low. Yeah, 3.3 .3 volts. And yeah, there of uh, I don't see any difference. So they run at 3.3 .3 volts. Let's see if they uh, run at 1.8 volt. If you really would use a low power thingy. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, they maybe look a little bit faint, but uh, yeah, so that's okay. But uh, let's go back to five volts. And I'm using a square wave to drive them because uh, yeah, that's usually what you get when you use them. Um, yeah, let's have a close up and, oh no, before that, uh, let's modify the frequency a little bit. So at the moment 50 hertz and let's say if they still work as 100 hertz. Yeah, wonderful. 200 hertz. Yeah, perfect. I mean, uh, if you want a flicker-free <laughs> display, driving it at a very high frequency might be a good idea. Um, I don't know if um, yeah, LCDs really have that problem if you film them. Uh, obviously not. Looks good on camera. 
but the higher your drive frequency, the more current you need. Not that you need a lot of current, but anyway. Let's zoom in here and experiment a little bit with the viewing angle. So I'm trying to avoid digital zoom here. We are still at five volts and uh, okay, there's the reflection, but viewing angle is, yeah, quite nice. Okay, you can't see <laughs> to bend that back. Nothing to complain about. Okay, we are out of focus a little, I think. Yeah, these are really nice raw LCD displays, uh, besides from being delivered with um, band pins. And uh, yeah, they are 12.7 millimeters in height, so uh, the digits are half an inch in height, which is also quite nice. Uh, let's try the other uh, kind of displays I bought too. Yeah, that's also working according to the supplied wiring diagram. And yeah, at 50 hertz, 5 volts, no problem. Let's go up to 200 hertz. Yeah, no problem at all. And it needs only one backplane connection to work, which is also very nice. No problems whatsoever. Um, oh yeah, voltage. So let's go back to 50 hertz and get the amplitude down. And no, uh, they have no backlight. They are purely reflective as far as I can tell. So 3.8, absolutely no problem. Oh, oh, have you seen that? It's lost contrast. The other one didn't do that. Yeah, so I wouldn't try that uh, controlled, uh, using that controlled by a 1.8 volt processor, some low power stuff, but 3.3 seems to be okay. Uh, but they are specified for 5 volts anyway. And if you want to know how to drive, uh, yeah, raw LCDs, uh, I think EEV block had a video about that. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> I put a link in the description. Um, yeah, let's have a zoom and uh, let's judge the viewing angle you have on that one. By the way, uh, the size of the digits is the same uh, in height, 12.7 millimeters, half an inch between pins, 33 millimeters and in width, uh, I think it was uh, 50.8 millimeters. And there's a little blob here, which also uh, yeah marks your pin one. And uh, this is only a few tenths of a millimeter, but according to the drawings, it's uh, at most one millimeter. I think I measured them uh, at 51 millimeters total width. Okay, viewing angle. Yeah. I think there's nothing. Yeah, you got the reflections here. So it's reflective glass. All right. But... Yeah, there's really nothing to complain. That's nice. Let's have a look at the listings. 
So that was from AliExpress, from the eGoTo processors store, the EDS805 LCD display module, 4 bit, yeah, uh, 4 digit, uh, 8 digit, no, <laughs> okay, 4 digit, you saw it, okay. Um, yeah, measurements uh, with the pins, I guess, whatever. And I paid $3.23 for it. Uh, it sells currently for 286 euros. Uh, yeah, that's life. And that was a version that came not very well packed with the uh, really, really bent pins. But you can obviously bend them back. And from the same seller, Egoto Processor Store, the 3.5 digit, yeah, that's more like it, LCD display screen, yeah, uh, for 241 euro currently, and I bought them for $2.53. And yeah, there's no LCD drivers, yeah, with these things. You need external hardware to drive them. So no SPI parallel or uh, I2 squared. These are real raw LCD displays, but nice big numbers. And the next one, I'm using that. It's much easier. Oh. Ah, okay, four nice yellow things. Let me get one out of these sparkly bags and zoom in. So these are supposed to be snap-in, receptable and plug for K-type thermocouples, and yeah, I don't think you can read that. I can hardly read that, but it says, yeah, K, Chrome plus Alumel minus. And yeah, uh, the blades have a different width, so you are not able to put them in the wrong way around. Um, yeah, it's a little bit stiff. I mean, it's a Chinese model, <laughs> but uh, seems to work so far. Uh, let's open up that connector here. There's nothing to open here. Yeah, just screw in your internal connections. Don't lose the screws. Yeah, but no. Yeah, there is a, a small rubber grommet at the end, but uh, yeah, you have to drill your own hole <laughs> to it, so it doesn't have a pre-drilled hole. And I guess this will be slightly compressed when you screw this back together. Uh, nice note, yeah. There are real nuts, inserted nuts here in the plastic, and uh, these are real screws. So you will actually be able to uh, attach and deattach a lot of probes. Yeah, screw terminals internally. Otherwise, yeah, uh, it's not really soft going, easy going, but um, that also means it should make a good contact and you could always, you know, Take the file to the contact blades here and make them a little bit more nice. Maybe that helps, maybe not. You cannot disassemble here uh, the plug-in part that would go in a case. And uh, yeah, I bought these because a while ago I bought a whole lot of uh, yeah key type probes of <laughs> different types and um, yeah with screw terminals at the end and uh, yeah, a card, ooh, a big finger, card link 
And uh, yeah, it's a little bit inconvenient. Uh, and I thought I built something with these, which makes life easier. We'll see. Let's have a look at the listing. And these were from Banggood, the panel mount key type thermo thermocouple miniature socket plug connectors. I ordered four. The price goes down considerably if you order more than one. I think for four I paid 270 a piece, something like that. If you order just a single one, it's 333. Uh, it's good, it's not 666, is it? Um, uh, anyway, uh, this is a considerably good price. Uh, if you want to buy these, um, yeah, with um, Western, so from Western sources and such, uh, they can be quite expensive and yeah, n nothing for a professional product, but uh, you know, just to fool around, I think they are okay. Next, just a small envelope from Germany. Yeah, that must be eBay. Let's see. Okay, the knife is obviously not really good for opening. Oh, okay. There's probably an invoice here. Uh, I don't want to show you that. And, ah, let's have a close up. Yeah, breakout boards. And what I liked about these is that all the traces go directly to the edge of the PCB. There, uh, yeah, and these are for 60 pin SOP, uh, so 1.27 millimeters, or for, yeah, SSOP 16, 0.65 millimeters. And yeah, uh, all the traces go directly to the edge, keeping a nice separation between the left and the right side of the chip or the pads for the chip. And you get cheaper breakout boards uh, from the usual Chinese sources, but for some reason the outer pads make something like that. They first go to the middle and then they make a loop. And I have absolutely no idea why they are doing this, but I'm planning to use these for digital isolators. So I want a nice big air gap, a nice big separation between the left pads and the right pads for the chip. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the listing. That was actually from the German eBay, sorry, the German listing. Uh, the S sub 16 or sub 16 breakout boards, 319 for uh, for three pieces, uh, 313 for six pieces, and uh, yeah, it goes down to 303 for three pieces if you buy three or more. Free shipping in Germany, and it is from Sator Story. Uh, yeah, whatever. I have no idea. Maybe it's uh, available internationally uh, or not. And another China mail package. This one is, okay. Very well packed uh, in comparison to the uh, LCD displays. Uh, very, very well packed. I have no idea if I'm able. Oh yes, look, look at that. Yeah, 360 degrees packaging. Wow. And oh yeah, um, yeah. Um, 
it's uh can you see that actually yeah it's it's five digit or uh yeah at least uh four point and a half digit um an a meter i think yeah DC 10 amps and I'm not sure I think this one needs an external shunt. Is that possible? Yeah, looks like it. Um, anyway, I've uh, uh, already had a detailed look at these thingies. Um, yeah, uh, card link. Uh, let's have a look at the listening. I remember these things are not that cheap. Yeah, that one definitely needs an external shunt. For wire connector, yeah, here it is. So uh, power supply and positive in, positive out. Maybe there's even, yeah, look, circuit diagram. Everything's fine. So yeah, external shunt. <laughs> okay, can't do anything about it, can I? I have somehow to find out what the expected voltage is that thing have, or maybe I, yeah, we'll see. The listing. Before I forget it, it's for DC 5 volt supply voltage. And that was the YB5145B from the top meter store. For, oh, meanwhile, 722. I think I paid around, yeah, nine euros or something. The 10 amp version, but uh, I, I, <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> different versions I think is just a jumper on the board inside setting uh, yeah where the decimal point is um, that's all or something like that yeah and uh, that's all for today bye